Hey, Stephen Henry here at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl with a pretty cool 1973 Chevy Beauville G30 van. Now, a lot of folks think of vans as work machines, no windows, plumbers, carpenters, but when you see windows, you're talking about a passenger van. And in 1971, the third generation Chevy van arrived on the scene, replacing the 60, uh, the 70 through 67 and then the earlier ones through 64. So a third gen right here, all modern in many, many ways. The first Chevy van with an actual nose, taking a page out of Ford's Econoline van of 1968, wherein the engine is serviceable from the front. Now these were in production all the way through 1996, a 25-year run. So that's a long time to sell Chevy vans. Now this one here being a 73 has the steel grill which was used through 1977, 78 up plastic grills replace the steel. And it was a mixed bag because these things do tend to rust. We can see it right here. Whereas the plastic grills, well, they'll, they'll never rust. But again, with the big deal on these was the opening hood. And again, uh, Chevrolet and Dodge took pages out of Ford's 1968 Econoline playbook with the opening hood. Uh, previously, it was a flat nose, but this is kind of cool. This is a 1977 Chevy van brochure, and it kind of gives you an idea of how these things were sold. Again, most of these are built to stay tough, as Chevrolet said, 1977, but again, most were solid vans workers, you know, but again, Beauville and Windows, the sport van, meant passengers. Now, you would have either bought a Suburban or one of these Beauvilles in 1973 or 77. Let's take a peek here. Here is the um, the worker van with the sliding side doors, pretty two-tone paint scheme on this one, white wall tires, uh, two wheelbases on these, uh, 125 or 110 inches. Uh, but it's kind of cool just to see how they were marketed and different possibilities for the inside, how it can be dressed out. A um, little side window here, a sliding window, rarely seen, but that was a factory option right there, a small sliding glass window on the side. And these are pretty trippy too here. They vocational equipment packages. You could actually special order your van rigged out for electrician work or plumbing, or even weirder on the bottom right corner of this page, the wide body ambulance, that thing right there. That was a conversion. But if you look at it, you can see that the, the chassis is the same, but the body is made wider. And again, this is part of the mid seventies mandate to make vans more, functional for operating and saving lives rather than just rushing you to the hospital where you might die on the way. So these big Chevy vans are a big part of that whole deal. But again, the Cube van was part of the picture. Now, one thing about the Chevy van all the way through 1996, it's unit construction. Even these big, like one and a half tonners with the dually rear axle, this is unit construction. By contrast, in Ford land in 1975, their econ line went body on frame, basically a, a pickup truck chassis, which was a little more rigid and stronger. But Chevy Chevrolet actually made dualies, unit construction dualies, big cube vans like that based on the G-Series. Now let's look under the hood and see what we find. Uh, you could find a six banger, V8s. Uh, this one here has a two barrel carburetor. And uh, so it's a small block. And we look at the emission control sticker uh, here and we see 350 cube, four barrel. Yeah, it says four barrel carb. So somewhere along the line, that two barrel. Oh no, that's a four barrel. Never mind. It's, it's obscure. It's a 354 barrel in this one. And uh, let's take a peek here at the underside of the hood. Something that's wonderful about uh, GM products is the specification sticker here. And let's look at just some of the things here. The swing out rear doors, A18, Beauville equipment, E94, heavy duty front springs, the F59, uh, turbo hydromatic, M49, ox oh, optional axle ratio. We'll get to that in a second. And over here, Eaton locking diff, G86. And of course the LS9, no, it's not a Gen 3. This is the 354 barrel, I believe, that engine right there. But that locking differential, let's get around to that and take a peek. It's kind of important. This is a 1973, first year for the GM 14 bolt, 10 and a half inch ring gear rear axle. Made the Dana 60 look puny, which only had a nine and three quarter, but here it is right here, that massive full floating hub right there, telling us first year right here for the 14 bolt GM corporate 10 and a half inch ring gear axle still used today. And it mentioned locking differential. That means this one has an Eaton locker in between. So again, the snow tires on this thing tell us this thing was definitely used in New England. And with you know the fairly light tail, you definitely wanted to have a posi or a locker in the back. So this thing was de designed and ordered originally with the optional axle, probably a 410, maybe a 373 and uh, an Eaton locker. 
heavy duty stuff. Made a Dana 60 look small. Now keep in mind, if you see the GM corporate 14 bolt axle with a flush axle, which happened later on, that means it's got a smaller nine and a half inch ring gear and C clips. Uh, it looks like a 14 bolt, it kind of is, but it's a smaller version of this. So if, if you don't see the fully floating, but you also see the 14 bolt, that's a C clip type flat face, okay axle. But the big dogs, this thing here, these 10 and a half inches are still in production today. And a lot of people take these things, narrow and put them under Jeeps, they're bulletproof. Let's work our way around here. And again, the glass, the windows on this thing, this would have had three rows of seats, uh, would have handled what, 12 people, I guess. So this was made for moving human beings. Uh, this door has been replaced. We can see it's brown, but again, the beauty of these things for the full 25 model year run, all major panels were interchangeable. There was no change for the sake of change on these things. So it really was a, almost like the Volkswagen Beetle of, uh, of, uh, of vans, the sliding side door, which was an option. And of course, these are generally seen on the passenger vans. Again, opening doors this way out into traffic, kind of a dangerous idea if you're getting in and out as a passenger. And here's the back of this thing. And it is paneled. We can see that the this sort of a white and wood grain effect. That was part of the Beauville appearance package, made it a little more uh, civilized inside for people to... Uh, travel to and from the airport or wherever you might be going, a big family. But you know, one thing I love about junkyards, the things you find inside. Uh, now, Burnison Auto Wrecking has been in business for a long time. This apparently is a key rack for inventory of the old cars. Here's an old Volkswagen Beetle key right here. Look at that. It's from like 1960s. Uh, other things in here, we see like some Ford keys right here. GM keys, just a cool bunch of stuff. And these are vehicles that came into Burnus and Auto Wrecking and, well, didn't leave, at least not under their own power. Gotta wonder why the keys are still here. Other goodies in here, this is pretty cool. This must be, these are papers from an insurance adjuster, I guess, right here. It's a, it's a whole sheet, a fleet of these things. It says here, uh, model year and make, uh, bumper condition of car. So these are probably for uh, insurance adjusters, claim number, type of engine. How cool is that? A whole, whole bunch of these things. And other treasures that I found in this thing. And again, junkyards like vans because they can put stuff inside. The windows keep things pretty safe inside. And somehow these things survived. These are GM dealer brochures. Now these are earlier. This is from the uh, 68, 69 or thereabouts. Uh, this is the GMC light ton models. Here is the conventional models brochure. I love these things. These are such mean trucks. You know, unit construction with a cab, actually. They show how the, the cab is heavy duty. The big V6 engine, which was possible in uh, GMC trucks. Never sold in a Chevrolet, strange but true. And uh, just these dealer brochures are so cool. Vans, this again is the, uh, the first or second generation with the wraparound windshield, Chevy and GMC van. And of course, uh, GMC pleasure trucks, campers, Mount Rushmore in the background. But again, it's amazing this thing survived. The GMC value van, sort of a, it would take on the Metro and the Divco and the uh, uh, Metro, et cetera, vans. But here's a nice cutaway. So these things astonishingly have been inside of this van for years and years. I'll put them back inside. I'll put them in there so they're nice and dry, you know, so they live on. But uh, kind of cool, man, the stuff you find in the boneyard. Now, continuing, if you want to take a peek in here, this does have buckets up front, of course. And those little buckets are kind of nice. Uh, high back and headrest laws did not apply to vans until later. They came along in 69 for passenger cars, but a lot of folks like to take those, those low back buckets and put them into like a, a Chevelle drag car or a Nova gasser or whatever it might be. I'll open this door here. And there's the small block, that's the 354 barrel. And that weird cylinder, that round thing under the hose on the right hand side, that is the EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation. Part of the early emissions junk, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that, it helps to keep the air clean, we need clean air. But there's the 354 barrel. Again, a six banger could have been seen in one of these things. So that was a delete option because the Beauville with the uh, passengers would not have been light. So the six banger would have been a bad idea unless you were like the Department of Agriculture and needed something cheap, cheap, cheap that only was used on like the reservation or someplace going slow. And oh, a radio delete plate right here. This is inside of this thing. Probably, I'm saying a Ford Falcon, who knows? But just the stuff you find inside. It pays to be observant at the junkyard. And especially when you're looking at something as common as a, a Chevy van. Well, it's way more than that. First year for the 14 bolt, pretty cool piece. You got to really keep your eyes open in a junkyard. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Bags YouTube channel. There's lots more to come right here at Ferguson Auto Wrecking.